Hello and welcome. Uh, this is Daniel Who 5 dan and today I'd like to talk about unplayed AI Joseki. These days you can analyze pretty much any position with an engine like Catago and it will tell you lots of good moves and variations. So some of the most common and popular ones such as the 3-3 invasion have been played to death by top pros and amateurs. Uh, there are still lots of variations and new ideas that people haven't seemed to have considered much. Uh, so today I'll be focusing on the 4-4 low approach and one space pincer, low pincer. So firstly, why do we play the 4-4? It's it's more it's closer to center stone, so it's going to be easier to connect to up to it. And so that's better for a fight. However, it, it's fairly open skirted on the side, which can mean it's easier for the opponent's stones to connect up and go around the corner. So it can make a bigger corner if it keeps control of it. But there's an interesting thing which is that it can be a bit too close to the outside in a sense. So you, you worry about being pressed low if you play something like 3-3, but sometimes with the 4-4 you're still worried about being pressed down. So there's this move, which is a, a new AI move. And there's a severe weakness in Black's shape because it's it's not defended. It's not close enough to this side to be defended. So, for example, if you had a you know, on the third line, there's no urgent need to defend this cut. And if you do defend the cut, you can defend it in a more aggressive way. Whereas against this, Black pretty much has to connect. And before we used to think that this solidified the corner too much, but actually, Black's shape isn't so good and it hasn't claimed much of the corner yet. It doesn't have great eye space or access to the center. Uh, of course the standard move is C. We, we don't play the knight's move anymore, we always attach. One vulnerability of this is that when it, when it comes to uh, attacking the white stone, if black is trying to build a moyo in the center, it's, it's not so great if white can just reduce the moyo naturally especially as this stone is low, so there's still a problem in the corner. So white is going to be able to deal with that. The one space fencer. The, the most common move is to play in the 3-3. Three, three. So if we just review this shape, the, the S14 is the move that AI popularized, rather than connecting at R15. So white has a healthy corner and R12 is nicely placed to connect underneath in a shape with very few weaknesses. So it's a solid position locally, but a little low, and it can be made over-concentrated. Black will play away, of course. Then, if Black is trying to build a moyo on the right, this can be an very, a very annoying move. So, so normally it's a good idea to just defend, or at least defending is a, a big move, because there's this sort of follow-up, which is annoying because that's a cut. Though it, White well, can't really cut immediately because they're still pushing and there's a cutting point here. But later White will just uh, jump at P14 and ask Black to defend eventually. That position you can make a Tawari analysis. So it's similar to this Giuseppe, where White is playing a bit ambitiously leaving the cut open. And then Black makes a narrow extension and Black and White tries to reduce it. This exchange it's probably fairly even. White is playing quite aggressively. And then this exchange is a bit abnormal because uh, R12 is perfectly placed to defend this cutting point. And it's also perfectly placed to defend against the clamp at S14. So if you clamp now, it's white isn't going to get much from this. So just in general, Playing at, even though playing at S16 is uh, defending against this push and cut, which will take the corner, it's not so urgent when black has already has a stone at R12. And furthermore, if you do want to defend it, this is the normal move um, to yeah. do something in the upper side as well. So this is a bit too obsessed with just the corner, and black two it again. Then we have this exchange. It's as if black just extended and played away again. 
and why it gets this right. So normally, probably black has to spend another move actually. But certainly black can play more aggressively here, or here. So overall, it's this is still a fairly even result. The AI says that normally if it's just an open board, it's a bit too early for white to enter the corner. So you should probably invade a 3-3 first. The, the AI's favourite option in this sort of position is generally to, to Nuki. And then the question is what that can do locally. This move was around before AI, but AI has really popularised this move. And then white has several shape points to deal with this. And the main ones are to sacrifice, because black is taking the corner on a fairly small scale. It's not as if black is trying to, trying to build a, a big area. It's just taking away the eye space of R14 and making R14 look like a bad move. There's also this move. So if black doesn't do anything, this can be quite a nice shape to connect up the stones in an efficient way. And actually the corner is still a, a little vulnerable. Uh, but if black defends, then there's still follow-ups here to really force black to spend a lot of moves just capturing this one stone. And if you have some support, or if the right side is big, then you can jump out. And, or if, if say black has a wall around here and you just want to reduce black's moyo then this is a good way to do it if you have some supporting stones you might even be able to pin some but it's a bit risky when your stones don't have any ice space since black has already got off 17. now we've seen the standard stuff this was a pretty rare move before in human play but a lot of the time the ai says that if you if you're going to play something locally uh, at least in an open ball position this is the move uh, especially if white has supporting stones in the other corners, in say this this corner especially. Uh, the traditional Joseki was always the this one of the best moves. The AI tends to say it's hard to choose be between A and B, but the fear is that there'll be this sort of variation where black's corner is quite cramped as the fight develops, because you're you're expecting this to be a tense fight, but you're not expecting either side to give up their stones very white. easily. There's a good chance that white will be g getting uh, strength uh, with the R14 stones, at which point the corner is looking a little bit unhappy. This is a more solid move to actually kill the white stones, if it comes to that, because this way around white doesn't have such a comfortable way to live in the 3-3 point. You can still live, but it, it's much less uh, comfortable than it was before. This, um, this is the more common AI move. And this is really interesting. White can certainly live in the corner much more easily with 3-3. But at this point, if you're living in the corner, the, the meaning of P14 becomes not so clear. It seems to just be reducing Black's area. But you've spent a move, and it's not as if Black has needed to respond to P14. At this point, uh, Black is capturing P14 on a large scale. Or trying to. There's still a big shape point at the top. Uh, white strategy seems a bit stranger, but this is still a fairly even result because white has forced black to give white territory at the top by pressing. So just one thing to note is that it's not such a good idea to take this profit, even though it's also playable. But it's just that white will get sent to do something with P14 now. For example, later there's going to be an attachment. You play here, there might be this sort of move. Certainly, no, you, it depends if you can fight like this or not. So if black isn't scared of the 3-3 invasion, the immediate 3-3 invasion at least, there's still lots of weaknesses in black's shape and there are some interesting ways to deal with it. So the top move by AI is generally to just press on the right side and this has the standard sort of complicated fights that follow with this or black can just crawl and it seems that white's still not solid enough to do something very much directly against this black shape. For example, if we just look at the direct variation, if, if white tries to cut immediately, black has this move. So in a way, black is saying that since black has this resource, black can play one step further. So it can just connect simply like this, and white doesn't have enough eye space yet. So white will be a weak group running out. For example, at this point, it's probably a bit too much already to, to try to fight black because uh, white is just a stick. The other common move, if you have a position on the right, so especially if it looks like this, is to pincer. And you get these really complicated fights, for example, something like this. And the fact that this white group has lots of options 
think you're just taking a big point and also aiming at various cutting points as well. So this is a very complicated position. Another reason why black likes to play further away is that once black adds another move in the corner, N16 looks quite a bit more efficient than O16. And you might, yeah, there are some problems around O17, but you might be able to defend it quite actively by attacking white. So neither side wants to defend their group or just connect up at dummy points. This is the variation given by AI. They still want to make profit on the side before connecting their groups. And there was this cool move. So it has access to the side, the corner, and this cutting point. So it's very hard for black to answer. But there is still this Q15 move. You don't want to play it immediately because then it's not a good exchange. And there's still problems. problem. Say the problem might be at 016 now. And you, there's still no easy way to capture P18. You can't capture it at all. I'm not sure what you're meant to play anymore. There's a, a very annoying weakness at 016. So the AI move was this. So this is our nice move so that you can block in the corner later. And there's no worry about a snapback here. And white can just press there. And it's still a bit painful. And white is getting a big wall on the outside. There's interesting things in the corner. So the corner is a little different as well. But the fact that white has to spend a move at S16, where black can play elsewhere, means that black isn't so worried about losing a bit more in the corner. Because S16 was fairly low anyway. So if you can imagine, the shape might is arguably better if the stone at N16 was at O16. And also, if the stone was at O16, white might not be able to play Q17 anyway. There's possibilities of cutting. So we can also think about what is the meaning of this close pincer? It's certainly fairly aggressive, starting a fight, where all the, all the stones are close to each other. So any stone is vulnerable to a counter-attack. So normally you shouldn't play this without some support. So you should probably have black stones nearby, or at least in the corner. It's vulnerable to a counter-attack by being sealed in, and both sides must consider sacrificing any stone. Despite it looking like a tense fight, it's a fairly small area of space. And nothing's going to happen on a particularly large scale compared to, say, a move, a move like this, a move like this, which might be aiming to attack on a larger scale. Even if this white stone gets captured, it's not such a big deal, especially if white can still enter the 3 3 point. When the stones are in close contact, both sides tend to get thick very quickly. Okay, so let's talk about some variations with the counter pencil. This is blocking off the 4 4 stone on both sides. Black is going to have to find a way to deal with this water or stone. It's painful to live in the corner because you have stones reducing on both sides. So generally you have to run away. But if you just run away randomly into the centre, your corner is still taken on a large scale and you still haven't connected up to anything. So there's a fairly obvious move, which must have been the plan with the pincer, which is to, to cap. You know, we used to be taught that this is the only move. But the AI, AI has lots of ways to, to deal with the Agi inside here. It, it is good because it's settling the shape with one move, connecting up the stones, and it makes a lot of sense with R12. But it hasn't claimed control of the corner yet, and when white does take the corner, there's still a lot of Agi around here with a potential cut at Q13, or even simply pulling out with R13. The shape point is just to take the 3-3 three, three point. You can connect to either stone, and in the process, black will connect up solidly all the way. Black will be trying to counter-attack one side or the other, hopefully either capturing R14 in a thick shape or getting a Moyo towards the top side to counter-attack O17. So if you don't do anything, of course, white can just connect or pull back. And those are both pretty good shape with no weaknesses. Actually, moves like this are possible, but the AI tends to say that it's not so good. And white can tenute the already. Later, white can play here, and there's still a lot of Agi. Well, maybe white will play here as well. And you still, since you're not shorting a liberty of the R14 stone, your shape is pretty painful. It's a hard choice whether you should be connecting here and letting this sort of thing happen, or connecting underneath and allowing white to take a stone. Of course, the standard move is to pull back, but there are some other interesting ideas here. The other ideas are more common when it's not such a close pincer. 
you may have seen professional games, for example, where there's honey. But here it seems like it's just going to get cut. But we can talk about that as well. So normally you pull back and you don't push here because it shorts your liberties. Like this, white will be happy enough just to connect. There's a good chance that if you just play here, white would connect anyway. So play the solid move. So there's nothing good comes of shorting your own liberties. There are two main moves here, A or B. You can connect. Well, that does short black's liberties. And it might get one more point in the corner. And actually, in this shape, there's still some potential of this code. Or at the very least, there's endgame like this. But you don't play that soon. You don't play that until endgame because that just makes white alive. So this gets rid of that. But of course, there's much less impact on the right side. So here, there's going to be various things around here. 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 Maybe even here because... Even though the white shape is not great, the fact that there's a stone at S14 will still be more helpful in the fight because it takes away back side space than if it was at R15, like in this shape. This is damaging white zone eye space because there's a big move at S14 later. But it is just trying to get that extra point also. So I said that this prevents white from profiting with the Q18 honey. So even in this position, the Q18 can be a bit annoying. If you don't play anything and black white just plays as high, it's pretty painful to connect because... There's still a clamp, and more importantly, there's a cut at Q13. If you crawl, white has several options, but you're crawling on, on the second line, and there's still a cutting point. Locally, there's no point in taking this uh, endgame move yourself, because white is completely alive and damaging the right side as well. But it's still a, a big deal to fight over this area. So here, this move is to deal with the Q13 cut, and also prevent this on it from being so powerful because now you can just connect up very solidly. It's almost like the early Joseki but in a different direction. And also, it's almost as if there was this extra exchange uh, and there's this extra black stone as well. So black has played an extra move, but white stone here isn't so efficient. So it's fairly balanced. So of course it all depends on whether the, it's a good idea to develop the top side. And for the R12 stone to be good, you also have to be doing something on the right side. You also don't want to defend against Q13 directly because Later, you might want to play R13, both to defend the cut and have an impact in the corner. White will probably have to honey immediately. If you don't, then this is pretty painful shape. Whichever side white defends. If you defend on this side, this is Sente. There's the mouse stealing oil to Suji. Uh, and white is in Dame Zamari on all sides. And if you play on this side, well, then this sort of thing is center, and that's not great for the right side either. So basically, you don't want to be defending the cut like this, because then there's no good follow-up. This is much less meaningful now. It's over-concentrated. Okay, so the other idea is to play here. So this is not connecting up solidly to, to the white cornerstones above, but it, it has much more impact on the side, and it's really threatening to cut. The black standard way to play against this is to descend. If you play away, then the corner is actually in some serious trouble. Why can play at this shape point? I think if you play here first, then you're already in some serious trouble. Black has a lot of liberties on the outside. This is a massive wall, so it's going to be hard to counter attack. So this is actually the shape point. You play here to stop white getting out, and then there's this code. Normally white doesn't have enough code threats for this at the start of the game but it's very tricky. White has a shortage of liberties here. For example, normally there's some problems in the corner. Black has a shortage of liberties, but in this sort of position, white's shortage of liberties is becoming seriously problematic before black's shortage of liberties becomes a problem. But if you do respond, then O17 certainly looks too close. So if Q4, Q18 was going to be centered against white corner, O17 is too close to black's wall. Yeah, at this point, white, black can do the same sort of strategy. Actually, black can go further as well. But in this case, white can cut, um, but black can just dodge. There's no need to cut at an, a point where it would be a white empty triangle anyway. And there's generally this sort of variation. And again, white doesn't want to connect either. And later, later when black cuts, white can still press, depending on what's happening on the right side to make sure. So, so neither side needs to play there. So there's also this, which is a bit of a trick move, because if you respond, then white is so alive in the corner, and actually white is going to play an even more efficient move here and then white continue key. And later, black's follow-up will be to capture this stone, but there's still a cutting point. Normally, this is Sente in the corner, but since it looks like a Panuki, but 
it's not so solid a shape. So actually, there's a chance for white to block her. If you just play here, then it's it's a famous dead shape. I think it's here. But like this is a coat. But actually, this coat is very heavy on black as well. If black has spent so many moves trying to kill this group. In any case, white still has this clamp, which is which means that black isn't really getting much out of this. But the way black can refute this is by pushing through. Yeah, white falls back. And this is normally better for black. We can make a Tawari analysis. So it's as if, at this point, white honeyed. And then black played the standard proper move. So this is a Joseki that's considered slightly better for black, according to AI. Uh, it's, it's mainly that white really wanted to play the shape point at Q17, but black got there first, which left two cutting points. And whichever side you defend, say if you defend this side, then this time you are threatening to pull out your stone here. But later there's going to be problems here. Whereas if you play here... Okay, so, so this is the exchange that, that made the previous variation. So we can compare this up by a Tawari. This exchange has pros and cons. You can still play R13. It's a bit risky. Uh, there's shortage of liberties everywhere. But mainly you're losing a lot of Aji in the center. So there's a good chance later you want to play something like this. And then use the Aji around here. Or just here. Or play here. And it's difficult for black to respond. You might just have to take the stone. And in any case, if black was going to spend a move, white is happy because I can spend so many moves here already, and white has already got in the corner. The benefit is that white has defended against S17, so that's quite a bit more territory. Quite a bit more territory compared to this. But of course, it's not such a worry either, because now you can use this exchange happily. It seems a fairly questionable exchange. I think the AI said the exchange was fairly even in an open board. But overall, this is slightly better for black. Black plays B here, that's even worse than before, because white lives much more comfortably. And actually, there's still some... There's several weaknesses in black shape this time. So black can defend everything. But it's taken go say, there's still a problem here. Still a peep. Sometimes there's even this. Kovish Aji. Of course, white needs a stone here first to make that work. And there's even Aji like this threatening to connect up. So overall, black isn't really getting very much from this. So that's why the proper move was for there. Those were the main variations with A. There are some other moves here. You could call them trick moves. So why can pull this stone out? It's, in a way, it, it's almost trying to revert to this variation. Or maybe this variation, which is which we said earlier was good for white. But the thing is that white can't get both. If white plays here now, then these two stones getting captured is a big deal. Actually, they're not completely captured, but certainly white's shape is falling apart. Whereas if you play here, then you can just connect now. And the thing is, white can't play here. White can't play here either because there's a push and cut. I'm not sure which cut black should play, actually. It's a bit hard to choose. Maybe this one. And it looks like you're just giving up the two stones. And you, you, you still have a weakness there. And if you honey, then there's even more of an obvious problem. This, letting this corner go is a complete disaster. Uh, because 017 is not at a shape point. You want, if it was at 018, then you would actually uh, have a forcing move because it would be threatening to play R18. So this combination is not good. Uh, and if white has just has to, to connect, then the move at R13 has no meaning. It's just helping black make shape. And there was also this move. Yeah. <laughs> Since black has got an even bigger wall, uh, black doesn't need to capture it on a smaller scale anymore. So actually, it's correct to just block. Playing B is interesting. You might think that White has made a terrible exchange in the corner if this stone just gets captured at 3-3. Three, three. 
But this is actually pretty interesting if you haven't seen this before. The AI move here is that you have to add another move at A. So if you play somewhere else, this just shows how the 4-4 stone really doesn't help your control of the corner much, especially since you have white stones on both sides. So here, there's a move that makes me out of connecting to either side, and then black is in serious trouble, because this shape is completely split here. All, all the black moves here make, make no sense, and then black still doesn't have control of the corner. There's, there's, this shape is weak as well. So that's why black has to spend another move in the corner. So if we just take a look at that, if black plays here, white plays here. If black Ataris, yes, you can block off one side. But the corner has lived in Sente. Uh, your shape is still pretty awful. This is not necessarily a good exchange. You could just turn, maybe. Yeah, actually, uh, uh, Hajin Lee, the Korean professional, played this against me at the London Open. I missed this, this sort of move, and my position uh, started looking really bad. It wasn't this, this just like either. So black can also play here, but again, when white plays here, you still have to play here. It's funny, but there's, there's still this move. If you block this side, this is just cut. And it's even worse, because you've cut, it's like passing, you've cut at a point where white didn't have a passing point. So there's also C, so I mentioned this earlier. A is actually the proper move here. Yeah, after A, white can run out at R13. But if anything, there are lots of similar Joseki with the pins and stones slightly further away like this, in which case sometimes black just reinforces. And this, this time black white is ready for A to pull the stone out. And then black can Tanuki again. But this, so, so those were considered fairly even, if anything better for white. But this time, in the upper right, black has the advantage of having this push in, which seems quite a crude move, but actually, again, it's quite, it's threatening the cutting point on both sides, and not leaving white with a good follow-up. So if white played here, there would actually be a good follow-up here, at some point. At least a good shape point, because it's shorting black's liberties as well. In the upper right, there's nothing like that. It's not clear how you're meant to use this strategy. You can play at A, but actually this is... Well, black can make shape fairly well because of the short of liberties in the upper right. White doesn't know whether they dare to fight this color or not. Normally you have to Atari. But there's a potential of this code. And even if uh, white just captures, yes, you gain all the points at the corner, but actually black just black wanted to defend this cutting point anyway. So it might just be helping black. But it can be very awkward to cut, because later if, if say for some reason this is centre, and you get this naturally in the fight, then this code is starting to really become a problem. You might just have to back off. So that was an interesting move. So because of that, it might just be better to sacrifice the stone. But even when you sacrifice the stone, the fact that your corner uh, still has a problem here, which makes it harder for you to connect up to these cutting stones, it still makes a significant difference as well. But the AI just says that this is normally the better move compared to this. This time you are already threatening to save the stone, but black will just let you save the stone because this time there's a weakness at the top. So the weakness is around here or here. Because it's a tiger mouth, there's no connecting like this. There's a white well, still hasn't connected yet. It's, and like this, you can save the stone. And again, if white saves the two stones, then Black is moving out into the centre while defending the cutting point. Now some of the really complex variations start with D. So again, for the same reasons as before, you shouldn't be playing A. It's even worse than before, because white isn't going to connect anymore. White can Atari. And you still have that problem in the corner. You don't really want to defend, and the AI says you want to stop white connecting. But again, there's this move. And if white has the ladder, this is very powerful. If black can't capture this stone, then it's really difficult to see what black is getting out of this. Black might need to eventually connect up on around here as well, on the second line. 
Black has lost quite a lot of the corner. Uh, yeah, I was also suggesting this for white just to play a very simple variation. This move, it, it, ha it does a good job of defending the corner as well, as well as connecting up. So black's not too unhappy about that. When white is fairly solid with group on the right side, then black attaching at 016 is in very good shape because it's reinforcing the other side. So actually black should be cutting. And the reason this works is because R14 doesn't have many liberties either. And you need to use R14 if you're going to cut black off. There was a recent EGF Academy League online game, Oscar Vasquez against Victor Lin. I think the colours were switched, but Oscar Vasquez had the, the pincer stone and he played here, which is also possible. And Victor played here. But actually, the AI says you should leave the Aji. And there are serious follow ups here. The main follow up is his A. And you have to pull back. And actually, it makes a big difference whether Black and Finish get this exchange in or not. If you separate, then, well, there's, it depends on white, whether white has the ladder or not. But if white does have the ladder, you can just pull these stones out and then that is in serious trouble, you can't cut anymore. It, it gets a bit complicated with this honey, but I think the AI was saying white has a way to deal with this. And actually, white even has a better way, which is to push and then not make this negative exchange on the right side. Only you make it when black cuts. So if black cuts, black has to honey here, but the position looks like it's falling apart somewhere. But of course it's very tricky because white's group on the top isn't 100% either. You can make life by blocking the corner, but it's a bit painful. But the right side does seem to be falling apart from them. There's also this crude move, which the AI said was possible, but there's some serious problems in white shape as well. And you're helping black capture Q13 stone as well. Okay, so D. D is pretty complicated. Many people might think that you should be playing here. So it looks like white is getting quite a lot. Uh, the AI says you have to play here. At this point, black just plays quite simply, and you haven't captured these two stones yet. But black has captured the stone at R14, and the stone at Q13 is wasted as well. So it looks like white has captured an extra stone, because Black just blocked up Q17 and it's already been captured. But again, even though Black's stones are in a serious shortage of liberties, it's again a sort of principle of sacrificing one extra stone can actually help Black. So it, uh, the AI was saying it's pretty good for Black. And it gets even better if White Atari there. So there's a code, but actually Black just needs to connect. And now the main thing is that what Black was scared of before was White Honey. But now it has no impact. So if black did nothing before, this honey is quite nice because you have an Atari next. But this removes that honey and you haven't even really gained much on the right. So in the, instead in this case you can just Atari, it's not that well placed, but because you have to have it to capture the stone. So we can also do a Atari analysis here. I think the reason why the AI likes this for black is, is that in many of the variations black was taking go to, but here black was taking center. So it does look like a large corner. I think I said it was 12 points or something. You could imagine it as it being white's corner first and black playing this strange move to pick up white's shape. And then white's playing a crazy move. Of course here black should just uh, cut white off, but instead black honey, which just gives white this cut and black shape is falling apart. But white, white didn't cut black. White sacrificed a stone in order to cut black. So even though white got this cut, this sacrifice is a bit too much. This Atari, Again, it loses something in the center. Normally you want to be turning here, probably. This seems unnecessary. If anything, I think the shape might be here to defend. Black pushing is fairly big, but you shouldn't be playing so close to white's thickness. But I guess you could see it as black pushing and white shouldn't be playing so defensively. But although sometimes it's a good idea. I think that normally you should be standing there. So this exchange is fairly normal, but then white played the stone here, and that's just ridiculous. Black Black threw in an extra stone, which is certainly ne negative. There might have been some things around here later, if Black had support, which have been stopped by this. But 
at least black is getting an extra forcing move at plus 16. So black throwing in an extra turn barely loses anything. But the main thing is that q13 is a disastrous move. It's just passing. So if we view this as it being white's corner first, it looks pretty bad for white. But the fact that originally this was black's corner means that black does need to get a slightly better result. It's not so bad, but it's still better for black. So the AI said you just have to live in the corner. And Q13 looks silly because you're, you're cutting where black has got on a wall in the centre and R13 is damaging white's high space. The benefit is that you've created multiple cutting points in black's shape and O17 is perfectly placed to, to attack. However, the fact that your corner is not live is a serious problem. This was the AI variation, it's actually super complicated, I can't see what's going on here. None of white's groups are alive, but it's still pretty unclear. The AI said this was pretty bad for white. So there is a move here at B, which is really cool. If black gets tricked, then it's a completely different story. This is very good for white now. So if you cut now, then the Tari here, getting this Tari. This is still sent yeah, you still have to capture, but the exchange of P18 for P17 is pretty terrible. You're leaving a, a cutting point at O14 as well. So that's enough to make this good for white. It's only a few points difference, but you, you've stopped black getting this forcing move. And essentially you've moved black's move from O16 to P18, which is a dead stone. That makes several points difference. And the really nice thing, if you haven't seen it before, because you, you might instinctively think that this is the shape, because this is so often the shape, but this leaves this sort of edgy and still have shorter abilities with your stones at R13. So the really nice technique here is to Atari underneath. It's partially because this is forcing, but also just locally it's good shape. Why still have this center, but now R13 is no longer in a shorter abilities. So that's the big difference. The main worry that you might have is that there's this extension. Of course, what I can't bet yet, the corner's going to fall apart, but let's say White has an extra move. Is this a worry? I mean, if you play here, it looks like a disaster for white. If black is all connected and the corner's getting damaged as well, and black is out into the center. If you capture this stone, then Atari says some co agi here, but it's pretty heavy on white as well. So, but if you can't start this co, then White has just died on a large scale. So that's why this is, Atari on the second line is great for driving white through black shape if black wants to escape and making sure it doesn't have any liberties at any point. You know, it's, it's strange, but moving towards the side can actually give you more liberties, especially as this tiger mouth is not good shape if you get Atari. Yeah, so those were the variations if you jump in at A. So B was also a standard move before, and you have to cut in the shape. If you pull back, it's, it's actually a disaster because you haven't controlled the corner at all, and your shape is broken on the right side. You can only play this if you already have support on the right side, and you have big more on the right side, and you're trying to kill this white group. But like this, I'm not sure what white should play next. Maybe high on I can capture this, but again, this, this sort of agi. And for now, your shape on the right isn't looking good at all. Black has this bizarre empty triangle as well. It's not really making eyes yet. Sometimes it's good. It's not good if you have a stone here as well. You have to cut. Standard follow-up is at A. So this is a, actually a very old Joseki. Standard move is at A, and then you play here. And again, as the theme in all the other variations is to extend and then do something with the liberties. You might think that S14 is quite a painful move to play, because you don't want to you up that stone. Certainly, if you could get this exchange, then it would be better for you. But the problem is that black can just capture. The reason why this is not so bad move is that later, the end game for black is to play the Kasumi here. After which, this exchange looks much more reasonable. If black has to capture these stones later, so if this black group gets surrounded, then black will still have to spend two more moves. Whereas, if you do any other end game, that only spends one more move. But it depends, because there's an Atari here as well. So, so it does depend. Also, normally you're going to be using these things, but if, for, for whatever reason, black gets very solid here and you have no IG here, you still have this Kasumi, and this is good in the game as well. It really doesn't lose much. And for that reason, it's often a good idea just for black to capture this stone. 
a plaque has done this is great. Even if plaque has done that, the other plaque can still play here. It's fairly awkward to save the stone right next to black thickness. But though this is the solid move to do it. That's the old move. This move was also in the human games. The AI often says that in this shape, this is the strongest move to play. And certainly you Atari here, otherwise all your moves look like they make no sense. Uh, if you play away, then the AI says this is terrible for white. Black gets everything by connecting here. It's a funny shape, but there are quite a lot of custom points in black shape, and this deals with all of them at the same time. Certainly R14 looks useless. Q17 looks very bad as well. You can play away at any time pretty much, but by the time you play here, it's too late. You can't play away anymore. Like this, you, you can just immediately play the knight's move. And again, there'll still be follow-ups. The R14 is not dead yet. If black doesn't have the ladder, this is actually serious trouble. But if black responds, then that's good exchange. And R14 still has its uses. Things like this. Black could also play here, at which point the shape point is playing the corner. This time, it might be a bit much for black to separate, because there's still the shape point. And you're still trying to make use of the cousin stone and keep in some way. But black can just jump. Things down like pretty much at any point in, in these variations. In Tanuki. Okay, so the old variation was to cut here. The AI says that this is normally too much. And the new AI, Giuseppe, at first sight looks completely terrible for it. You're giving black all of this. The AI says that this is even, and this is the best result for both sides. If you look at this shape, actually black is being pressed down quite a bit. If you have a normal 4-4, maybe I'll just change the colours. It's as if you, you squeeze black down like this, which is actually not so bad. And then the follow-ups, it's as if you had this exchange. Well, that's certainly good for black. Then black played some random move. And when black should just capture, black ran out with the stone, which gave white a lot of forcing moves in the centre. So actually, even in this original position, it's fairly even. And then even though white sacrificed several stones, black took Gote, which is pretty important as well. And white managed to use all the sacrifice stones fairly well. Of course, there's still this potential for a color in the corner. At least white can honey. And a, a map pulling out an F2. The old humor move was to play here, push through, create several cutting points, but actually, these only have three liberties, so it's quite difficult to fight. You can play here, because you're about to capture black in the ladder. Then you have to save these stones immediately. Proper move is just to block. And then, play here. There's no need to defend like this. You can make it some ice space, which means that black can't win the capturing race. But this one was the one where I said it was 12 points in the corner. And it depends on the outside, of course, but in an open board, this is often better for black. White has some dead stones around here. This isn't a fight that's going to go well because of the position of O12, certain shape point. There's some funny agi here that probably you need to play some move around here to set it up first. So black's outside isn't completely solid, but it is going from the upside all the way to the right side. And white's profit in the corner is limited. I did hear about some trick moves around here, so if you play B, well, if black backs off, this is a completely different story. White is getting so many more points in the corner, and the outside, this cutting point is is much more severe, because you have to defend this cutting point first. Well, I think just like this, there's, there's a cutting point. Maybe here. Black's shape is not very good. So you, you have to fight for and the painful thing for white is that you, you can't play another move here because this corner is, everything's just dead. I mean, that has an empty triangle to get more liberties. So you still have to come back here, which, which allows black to capture the stone. So the main difference here is that white has made this exchange. It seems not so bad for white because you, you're forcing black to spend another move here. But actually, you've lost all the power of this move. Before there was a, a throw-in, a tarry, tarry, tarry. But now, there's nothing. And um, black is a lot more solid. The idea is to run out here. But of course, if you have support on the right side, then this is going to be powerful. But it's not as if black is going to die. But just in general, this is not so great for white. There's also this interesting move the AI suggests. That the correct move was to play 
the shape point. You can't do something random before things get, stones get captured. You have to tarry. So you have to connect. But, but white wants to play here so much, but again, this is just we've lost the corner again. So you have to play here. And it looks very similar to before, except white sacrificed some extra stones in the centre. And also, there's no cutting point. What has helped that fix the cutting point at Q13, because this stone is already in the net. So this was the AI suggested variation. It doesn't look great. Though. Black has already captured this stone. But black is in a short term lead for now. I'm not sure what happens next. My instinct is to turn her. So white's corner is now only uh, seven points or so. This would be black getting tricked. It looks like it's going to capture the stones now. You, you're either going to, it makes me either capturing these three stones or the stones on the right side. And it does. Normally the shape point is to play here, but this is actually trying to capture one more extra stone. The AI comes up with these terrible shape moves, but they're practical. Black shape is this terrible shape. The white stone is making this terrible shape, I don't then white runs out here. <laughs> AI was saying it's about even. All this has been captured, and white stones in the corner are, are, can't make life. However, the problem is that black first needs to get out on this side, and actually black can't save the stones in the centre. Black can save something, but black can't save the cutting stone. That's one hell of a fight. Yeah, so in summary, the AI says you should just press black low, rather than trying to save the stones that are already almost surrounded. There was a move I mentioned earlier, and I thought this was really interesting. So, if white just plays here, then black has gained something. Because black doesn't have to worry about this S14 energy. And for the same reasons, you're not so scared about white pulling R14 out. The AI had a nice move there, which is to not take the corner anymore, because black's already played on the second line. But there's this move. So for now, you're threatening double Atari out of Q15. It's funny. It, Normally, you, you threaten black from inside the corner. But this way around, you're threatening it in a, in a really weird order of moves. There's this Atari. So somehow you've managed to surround the 4 4 stone. You've, you've spent two moves already partially surround the 4 4 stone. It links up to this stone nicely. Well, if you play here, then you've lost the corner. So that's no good. You should just capture. And then white plays it, and this is a very large corner, much larger than before. You've got P16 and S16. And there's no cut because this is Atari. The advantage for black is that there's no energy, there's no short abilities anymore. Though actually it's not necessarily 100% alive if it does get surrounded. This sort of move is a small problem. But that lack of energy is going to make a big difference when trying to make the right side or centre into territory. But P16 is also making a big difference in taking control of the centre, uh, moving towards it and expanding the other side. And actually I thought about this for a while and I noticed that there was a shape point here. It's a fairly standard move in this tiger mouth shape to peek there. But my idea is that if a fight starts in the, on the right side and you have some weak stones around here, if black can get this naturally then there is a problem in the corner because there's a code. This is actually quite a severe code for both sides. But if white is forced to retreat then black can live in the corner and white's shape is terrible. Of course, black side space is also disappearing, so that's a bit tricky. So that's part of the idea with this move. And so if white plays here, black is going to play in naturally. So you could defend around here, but there's this Atari, which you don't really want to accept either. So probably you just do nothing. Because if you play here immediately, then white will respond, and then it, this code is not happening anytime soon because it's very heavy for black. So that's why I wanted to play here first. And the idea is that if you don't do anything, say if you play in the centre, uh, maybe here? No, maybe that's not good shape. If you play in the centre, then there's this move. The white shape, even though it looks extremely efficient, there's still a few weaknesses. It's a story for later because black isn't going to play this immediately. It's not big enough. But there's still some potential in the corner. So if you play here, there's, that's profit already. If you play here, 
there in the middle of the corner. Play here, then that's connect underneath. Similar story if you play here, still connect underneath. Yeah, so there is some edgy stuff. But they were saying this is about about even, but better for, for white than a black player there. D is also possible when you're trying to expand the centre and you're not so worried about the edgy on the right. And you're trying to defend like this. Of course you could revert to a, a variation like this. But this is trying to get the end game as well. Of course you, you really do have a short of liberties now. If things like this happen. If there are moves around here then there's going to be problems in, in your shape. Even just a move like this. So if you're not worried about this and you just want to expand right side on a large scale or perhaps connect up to weak stones on the upper side then a few 14 makes sense. Also suggested this move. It said the reputation was to Atari and take the corner. As usual, you can't let this happen. Even more so because your shape is already falling apart in the centre. This is too, much too good for white. If white just connects, you've actually gone tricked. It looks like it's a nice shape. And there's still an awkward shape point here. I think it looks like it's a serious problem. Serious problem for black. But maybe it has some resources that I'm not seeing. Maybe it's alright. So that was the variation with A. B it's a similar story, I think we already pretty much mentioned this. C is a possible move in some situations. If, it, if white is trying to play a move around here, there's another variation that's possible. So again, there's no way you're, you're taking the corner, especially as you're only capturing one stone this time. That hasn't even made this bad exchange. So I think it's just, it goes like this. We, I mentioned this before, this is not good for it. it because it's just wasting Q13. Instead, the idea is to play S14. So this works much better if white has the ladder. If you just simply connect that B, you're in trouble already. Yeah, there's two problems to deal with. This is a ladder, and this is your stones are captured. This is not anywhere near enough conversation. You still have nothing in the corner. Yeah, so you, the idea is that you want to Atari. If white runs, then you can probably survive like this. It looks risky, but I, you can probably just about survive. At which point you can take more key. Key shape points. And that's why the AI suggested you play here first. Because if you play it later, why not? Why might just sacrifice the stones? And then there were lots of variations. But one example was this. I mean, what an empty triangle. But it's because why is also in Dumb is You're threatening these three stones, so this curve is quite heavy. It was also suggesting this move, but that makes it easy on white. Here, if white plays down, you're just going to short liberties to remove the edge. If you remove the edge immediately, you're losing quite a lot in the corner. Of course, you might want to sacrifice these. Then take a profit in the centre first. So that's the meaning of this move. But it's still a Atari and run, and it's your corner's not alive, so you do have to do something on the outside. And you don't want to be too submissive either. I mean, if you just play like this, white gets profit on both sides. So that's a complicated fight. I don't know what happens. I don't think you can't just hurry. So then extend. It might be enough. Since these white stones are dead, white shouldn't. White should probably not be trying to save everything. Uh, white should come just a hurry and extra time there. Maybe something like this. The fact that there's this code is really tricky. Because again, white can't fight this now because there's a, this is Atari. But if white can somehow... I mean, it's not realistic that white's going to play here to, to threaten the code, but it's not as if this code captures black either. Because black can always come back here to capture white. But 
Yeah, it's an interesting situation. Actually, it's, it's probably better to just cut. If you if you extend, then why will keep pushing? They said pushing from behind is not so great, but when you're sacrificing stones here, this is the profit that you get. And it's a very big deal to let your opponent turn at the boundary of your your walls. Especially as there's a shortage of liberties on for both groups. So here white is in shortage of liberties, here black is in shortage of liberties. I mean sometimes it, it's even good to push again and aim at the double high. But in this position it's probably premature. Okay, so those were the variations I looked at for B. Yeah, it was also suggesting to Mickey. Then there's this D move, I haven't put in a variation for that. D as well. Okay, that's probably enough for uh, this video. Uh, thank you and see you next time.